Hi guys and welcome to the next episode in this fan build series. I hope you're all doing well and thank you for joining me. In this week's video I want to tie up some loose ends around the van. <laughs> Serious. In this week's video I want to tie up some loose ends around the van and get it ready for the next stage of the build. So I need to install a water level sensor inside the water tank and the water filler point as well. I had originally planned to put the water filler on the outside of the van but I've decided against that as I don't want to cut another hole in the side of the van as I feel it will just encourage more rust. So I've decided to put it inside the van at the back here above the gas locker and I'll show you that in this video. I also want to work on this section above the uh, rear doors of the van. It looks a bit rough at the moment, so I'm going to show you how I neaten that up. And finally, I want to install the diesel heater inside the van uh, so we can use the van all throughout the year. In the winter months, it's going to be very cold in here, so I think we'll appreciate having the diesel heater installed. <laughs> This is the water level sensor, it's just a little float on here. And then that goes to the water gauge in the cupboard up on the control panel, which I showed you in the last video. So I need to drill a hole and screw this to the tank. I could put it through the lid, but I think I'm gonna go through the plastic as it sits slightly lower. I've got a hole saw slightly bigger than the float. cover this hole up and blow up all the swore. Don't want that going in the tank, if we can help it. Comes with stainless screws, which is handy. Just drill some pilot holes. Now gonna tap the holes. Put our gasket on there, put the sender in the tank. Obviously not going to over tighten these because it's only plastic. Uh, there's good. Now I'm using the blue and the brown core for the uh, control signal on the ground. Okay, so that's installed. Another job ticked off the list. This is our water fill point at the back of the van. I just built it into this ply box um, above the gas locker. 
We've got this clear pipe going into the water tank and then our vent pipe on top of that. And that allows air to escape when you're filling the tank. I need to put one more air vent in the tank so that when we're drawing water off of the tank, it allows air back into it so that the tank doesn't collapse. This is what I'm using for the tank's air vent. So it's just a one way valve here. It allows air into the tank, but it won't allow the water to escape. So if you blow through this one way valve, it allows the air through this way, but the water can't get out this way. I've got a piece of flexible pipe just to bring it up a bit higher. So that can go on there. Jubilee clip. Clamp that down. Now I've got some sponge. I'm just going to put this over the end like that and put a cable tie around it. I'm going to have my air vent here in the tank, so I just need to drill this hole out. The next job is to install this diesel heater. Here I've got a turret plate for it. And this is just so that you can drill one hole through the floor of the van um, and it protects the flooring from any of the heat generated from the exhaust. Your turret plate goes on the bottom of the diesel heater there. First of all, I need to make sure that when I drill the hole through for this turret plate, um, I'm not gonna drill through into any of the chassis. So for that, I'm gonna put it where it needs to be. So I want a clearance gap around it about 100 mil should be fine. I'm gonna have it about there. Now I'm gonna measure from the edge of the van. The seal sits about here underneath the van. So I'm gonna measure that in about 270 mil. And then I'm gonna measure it from the B pillar. So I'm gonna go underneath the van and check that we're not gonna drill through into the chassis. Okay, we've got a hole in the floor. I've painted around this bare metal edge here with a bit of red oxide primer to stop it going rusty. I've now got my turret plate. I should have actually got the deeper one as this one doesn't go all the way through the floor, but it should be fine. So put that in there and I'm gonna screw that to the floor. I've secured the diesel heater in place with these four bolts here. I'm now going to put on the exhaust pipe and the air intake and this is where the fuel line connects. The grey putty around the edge of the turret plate is actually seam sealer and I've put that in there to stop water getting in between the van floor um, as the turret plate wasn't quite deep enough but you shouldn't have this problem if you go for the deeper turret plate. There's just enough room to get a little socket in here to tighten up the Jubilee clip. I've got a separate fuel tank here for the diesel heater. I could tap into the vehicle's fuel tank, but I don't really want to do that. And the main reason is because sometimes I put additives in the fuel for the van. The van can run on vegetable oil, whereas the diesel heater can't. So I want to keep the fuel tank separate. I've got a new fuel line here, which I'm going to be uh, replacing this one with. Right, I've drained this section of fuel pipe. So the first thing to do is to get one of these rubber connectors and that goes on the bottom of the tank. Get a little hose clamp. Put that on there. This pipe here. That pokes down the end. Tighten that one up. Okay, you make sure that the mesh screen goes from the tank so it catches any of the sediment in there. So from the fuel tank we've got our diesel filter and then from the filter it goes to the fuel pump 
at the moment this line is empty so I want to prime it to the fuel pump so all I'm going to do is take this off allow the diesel to come into here and then as soon as the diesel gets to the fuel pump we know we've got most of the air out of it from the fuel tank through the fuel filter to the diesel pump and then from here I've drilled a hole here to go through the floor of the van and into the bottom of the diesel heater. So this is where the fuel pipe is going to come through. As you can see, I've just painted it around here with a bit of hammerite. Then I've got this little rubber grommet. The fuel line's connected. It goes through the floor through this grommet here so it doesn't chafe on the metal. And then we just need to connect our air intake here. We've got our air intake pipe here. I've just cable tied that to the chassis. Our fuel pipe comes through the floor through this rubber grommet here and into the bottom of the diesel heater. And then we've got our exhaust pipe and I've bolted that down here. We've got a silencer on it and the silencer's got a hole in the bottom. That's got to be at the bottom to let the water out. I've just bolted this exhaust to an existing hole here. I didn't want to drill any new holes in the chassis, so um, that should be fine. These solder shrink tubes are absolutely great. So you just put the solder shrink on there, put one on there. Push the cables together that you want to solder. Twist them around a bit. Pull your solder shrink over the joint and just get a heat gun. melt that down on there like that and I'll do the same with this one and on the wiring loom we've got our plug for the diesel pump so plug that in there and then it's got a little retaining clip somewhere that clip just goes on there to hold the plug on like that and then this one's for the remote control so we can plug that one in there and we're all wired up. Okay, let's turn it on and see what happens. The fan started. Okay, the pump's clicking away now. Turn it off, let it cool down, there we go. And that's the diesel heater installed. Obviously I need to neaten that up when I build this bench seat that's gonna go here, and that'll be in the next video. No rain for months and then it all comes at once. Thank God I managed to get that diesel heater installed. This section above the back door is always going to be a tricky one to scribe in and in my van I've got all my cables running through here to the control panel. I've also got my reversing camera up here so I want to be able to access this just in case I need to change the reversing camera or adapt the wiring for whatever reason. So I'm going to turn this into a bit of a feature. I've got some of these fake plants from Ikea. They were only a pound each in the reduced section as opposed to six pound uh, with the pot because obviously they're missing the pot. So we don't need that part anyway. I'm going to put these up here. Um, I've got some ivy and some fairy lights. So I'm going to turn it into a feature um, to really set the mood. So the plan is to put a strip of wood through here. Um, I've got some ivy squares. So I'm going to fix the ivy squares to this piece of wood. Then I've got these plants. Drill some holes for a bit. Poke them through. Um, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to show you it. Let's do it. So let's measure this through here and we get a strip of wood. I'm going to 
have that one right up there. Put a screw in through there. I could bolt it actually. I might bolt it through. And then this piece will go here. So I've got these squares of ivy and I thought I could put those up there and cover up that. left for me to say is thank you for watching this video i hope you found it useful and it's given you some ideas of your own van builds if you enjoyed watching the video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed i'd really appreciate it and if you click that little alarm bell you'll get notifications when i post new videos and hopefully i'll see you next time where i'll be working on the pull out sofa bed i still need to work out how i'm going to do it um, and then i'll make a video about it so hopefully i'll see you then cheers guys bye for now